Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to do lead code number 36, which is valid Sudoku. So the problem is simple. Um, given a partially filled Sudoku grid, we need to determine whether this is still a valid Sudoku grid. Now, a Sudoku by definition means that when it's complete, each row, column, and 3 by 3 square must have digits only between 1 to 9 without repetition. So, um, it says that a Sudoku grid partially filled could be valid, but it's not necessarily solvable. Um, in this case, we only need to determine if it's valid. And it is given that the board only contains 1 to 9, so we don't actually need to validate that like there is a number outside 9 on the grid. And the given board size is always 9 by 9. Um, empty squares would be represented by the character dot. So basically, since this is partially filled, we need to um, validate if it still adheres to the properties of a Sudoku, which means each row, column, and sub 3x3 three three box has no duplicates. So the first thing that comes to mind uh, when you do this is that you can run a for loop that goes through each single row, each single column, and each single 3x3 three three box. But that would not be very maintainable, and you have a lot of duplicate codes because you would redundantly be looping over all these, um, all the rows, all the columns, all the three by three boxes, putting them together, validating if um, they don't have duplicates and stuff. So it's just not very. Um, the code is just gonna end up being very long and messy. So for the purpose of this problem, um, I think it's more of a logical coding problem if I were actually to ask this in an interview. Um, I wouldn't ask this to a candidate to test their data structures or something. So we definitely know that there's we have to go through every single um, box, but we just want to do it without having to write a lot of duplicate code. So. The idea I'm, that I'm going to go off of is we maintain a single set which contains so basically like for example the number 5 um, if you see 5 in row 1 you should never see 5 in row 1 again if you see 5 in column 1 you should never see 5 in column 1 again and if you see 5 in 3x3 three three box 1 you should never see 5 and 3x3 three three box 1 again. So basically, if you create a class, so if you create a class that uh, d determines like a unique Sudoku square, it has um like a square like a square i don't know i'll just call it a square type so that means if it's a row if it's a row a column or a box so basically um and then it will have i'll just i'll get to explaining this in a second and then it would have an index so for example, um, earlier we made the statement that if I see 5, so 5 in row 1, I should never see 5 in row 1 again. That means the combination of these three must be unique, right? So if I see, as another example, if I see 6 in box number three, I should never see six in box three again, right? 
So that means if we, for each square, we maintain a combination of these three attributes. So we go through five, we determine what row, column, and box it is in, and put that those three values in a set. And then we just check if the set has duplicates or not. So, so that way we would be able to determine if there's anything that's already in the set, then we know that it's a duplicate. So this way, this allows us to create a single set and a single loop. So, um, so we will need some constructors on this. Let me just create a constructor real quick. And you can skip through the typing if you want. Just fast forward the video. Um, I like to solve these questions very naturally as I go with you so that you can actually see how I'm doing it versus me preparing beforehand and just um, blindly pasting stuff so that you can actually see what problems I run through and how I go about it and the methodology and stuff so um, so yeah so let's just keep it like this and then since we're gonna put this thing in a hash set we would also need uh, to override a hash code function so um, index value and an equals function public boolean Is it square or is it object? Objects are equals this and other. Um, if this doesn't work, I'll double check, but I think this is right, so I'm just gonna keep it this way. So now we have our class that represents a unique Sudoku square that is ready to throw into a hash set. So here, let's create our um, hash set. So I like to just throw private finals on here. Um, we have a set of unique Sudoku squares. And then what we're going to do is for int row index equals zero. So we're already given that the row and the call index, I mean the board will have nine rows and nine columns. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, so it's basically we're going to go through the board and check. So now before we proceed, um, Okay, let's get the character in the board. So board, row index, call index. And if this character is an empty square, then we just return. I mean, no, sorry, we don't return. We continue. So we just ignore empty squares because we're only interested in the part of the Sudoku grid that actually been filled so um, I'm just declaring this empty square as a constant right here all right so now we have got that case out of the way now we're so sure that the C is a number so we're gonna get the value of the square so I'm gonna say square value is equal to int and what I'm gonna do is just subtract C with the zeroth character so it's gonna take the ASCII code of the character and subtract it with the ASCII of zero. So then the difference would be the actual integer number. So like if it's if it C is like five, as in the character five, the, the ASCII of five minus the ASCII of zero 
would be 5 so then we'd end up with the square value of 5 so now <coughs> we uh, okay so now that we have this now we before we proceed so now we have the index we have the value and we're ready to check and put stuff in this in this set but before we do that we have the row index the call index but we don't have the 3x3 three three box index yet so the way I'm gonna number boxes is this is box 0 this is box 1 box 2 box 3 box 4 box 5 6 7 8 so then I'm gonna introduce a new thing a new term called 3x3 three three row index and 3x3 three three call index so this has a 3x3 three three row index of 0 this entire row this entire row has a 3x3 three three row index of 1 and this entire row has a 3x3 three three row index of 2 similarly this three columns the first three columns will have a 3x3 three three call index of 0 these three have a 3x3 three three call index of 1 and these three have a 3x3 three three call index of 2 once we have those two indices we'll be able to compute the box number so 0 the first is 0 1 2 and then this is 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we just take the 3x3 three three row index and multiply it by 3 and add the 3x3 three three call index so here 3x3 three three row index is 0 multiplied by 3 still 0 plus the call index so this will end up being 0 this will end up being 1 this will end up being 2 here and the 3x3 three three row index is 1 so 1 times 3 is 3 this is 3 plus 0 which is the call index here so this becomes box 3 this is 3 which is 1 times 3 plus 1 which is the 3x3 three three call index so this will be 4 and this will be 5 um, 5 here because it's 3x3 three three row number 1 3x3 three three column number 2 so 1 times 3 plus 2 so that would be 5 so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so um, so in order to get the box number it would be the the row index 3 by 3 times 3 plus the call index 3 by 3 yeah that would be it right so the row index 3 by 3 times 3 plus the call index now to the row index 3 by 3 is simply row index over 3 right so the first three rows this is 0 the second three rows this is 1 the third three rows this is 2 so it's just divide by 3 similarly call index 3 by 3 is uh, call index over 3 and then the box number would be this so now we have row number let me just call it box index for consistency so we have row index we have call index and we have box index and now that we have all these three values uh, we can now create our squares right so so row square is equal to new unique sudoku square um, so this would be okay let me just define the enum um, square type real quick so I row call box okay so here I'm gonna go square type dot row and our row index is just row index and this is the square value and then the call square um, is square type dot call with the call index 
and the square value. So here, I'm just gonna put a if um, squares dot contains row square return false and then here I'm gonna put if squares dot contains call square return false and then I'm gonna create the box square which would be box here and box index here so if squares dot contains box square sorry yeah box square then return false otherwise we just add we just add all of the three um, square unique squares to the set so we can detect duplicates these three would definitely not be duplicate among each other because you already have one dimension that's different so we create each of them we check if you've already seen it just get out if you've already seen it get out if you've already seen it just get out um, otherwise we just add all three um, into our into our squares and then if we've if we complete this for loop without returning then that means we don't have any duplicates and return true now I'm sure this has a bunch of compile errors but let's see okay so that's one thing is it this okay so it, it compiled um, let's try to submit it and see how it does stack overflow on objects dot equals um, okay so I'm just gonna look up the internet for an implementation on equals because this is typically auto-generated code okay now let's see Okay, so this works. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching.